what's up everybody we are oh, back God. it's been a while been i've a missed weeks. you i missed you guys I, I missed how are we you. doing uh doing good obviously we got somebody else on set we got josh hernandez the sparrow hawk um the the mind the brains the back behind the whole operation you guys are a franchise you're a detailing operation yes sir that owns a franchise as well yes sir and then um guys can buy into the franchise and tell us a little bit about that if you don't mind uh, so we are, like you said, a national franchise and, yeah. and specializes in aircraft detailing. That's our thing. Mm-hmm. That's our focus. Uh, that's the market that we go after the most. And it really is just coming from most of our guys' background. We're all, for the most part, aviation yeah. backgrounds, genuine aviators. Yeah. And see, and, and that's always interesting. I may know a little bit more than I'm leading on to. We might be talking some business uh, while you're here, but we're not going <laughs> to, we're not going to delve into that here on the show but you know obviously we've been spending a lot of time together so people probably can figure that out you know that that there may be a big announcement there may be a big announcement coming in the next week or two you've been hanging out with a lot of planes there dustin a lot of planes i have i have you know kind (laughs) of like yes just the beginning that's right but anyway so we brought figured josh bringing josh in today um our topic is going to be on sticker shock and i think it's a great topic and having josh here i'm sure these guys that own these jets and big planes i mean you know even if they have um, an endless amount of money or, or an unlimited budget i think people are still price conscious at times and you could still get sticker shock uh, absolutely i mean you got to think they got money for a reason yeah a lot of times right. they're the biggest penny pinchers and you think oh it's 40 bucks i'll get that yeah they'll they'll combat a ten dollar fee <laughs> it's still a sell it's still a sell no matter what yeah. i think that's a great point and you know i think that we all kind of have this thought in our mind that oh we go do the big boats or the planes or whatever that these guys are just an open checkbook. And it's so couldn't be further from the case. For the most part, for yeah. the most part. I mean, you got those guys that are kind of just nonchalant. About just handling. And yeah. I almost think in their mindset, it's like, oh, it's Tetra. We actually need a little bit more. You know right. I mean? but yeah. For the most part, um, it's not the case. No, it, it, it's not. And now I think that it becomes easier once you build the relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, once you've done work for them and they realize, hey, this guy's going to take care of it, then it does become that that um easy sell like hey whatever it is basically just tell me what it is and i you know i'll pay it um but let's let's back up right let's talk about sticker shop okay we want to we want to dive deep into this and i know our young detailers i know our new guys out there um or if they if they haven't experienced it as they start to change their pricing and their pricing evolves with their detailing business they're going to experience customers that have sticker shop uh nick how how do, often does this happen to you and kind of how do you uh, deal with that. And what's your thoughts? Yeah. I kind of like when, we, when I saw sticker shock, right. I'm like, first thing I think of thing is like dealerships, right? Like that's where it sort of came from when you see the price literally on a sticker yeah, on the window. That's right. And you're like, yeah, I'm not paying that. Or, you know what I mean? I feel like that's where it sort of stems from. And now with everything going on with dealerships and the markups and stuff, yeah, I think, I think those customers are even more cost conscientious if that's the right way to word it <laughs> um, you know? i'm gonna go with it yeah yeah <laughs> so it's like um they're 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 trying to keep an eye on like okay hey if you're charging this and they're charging that is the value there um yeah and i think that's the key word there is that value right no matter Absolutely. what they see a ceramic coating or they see a detail for a certain price is are you going to be able to convey that value to the customer yeah, and you think about it. Here, here's the reality: is most of the times a customer, they don't know what this should cost anyway. They may have an idea of what they want to spend, mm-hmm. but they don't know. There's no book that you open up to page 36 and say, "Okay, full details in Wisconsin. Um, they are 285 dollars." No, there is no book. So it's up to you to show the value. It's up to you as the detailer to say, "This is what I charge, and here's why I charge what I charge." And sticker shock is going to happen now. We all know, as detailers, most of us start out as cheap, very, very cheap to get all the business. Was that true for you, Josh, when you were starting? Absolutely. I mean, that's that's kind of somewhat of the plan, if you will, even uh-huh. on the aviation side in comparison to uh, the other aircraft detailing companies that sure. are out there. More like established ones that, yes, that had already been there. And, but the good thing is, is that with our structure, it's kind of cheating because with a group effort, if you will, amongst all the franchise yeah. locations that we have, we're able to get our stock much cheaper oh, absolutely. even if we're coming in we're actually starting the same profit profit margins. margins are there you're just driving costs down so you can get competitive in absolutely. pricing all right so let's talk about so so when you start cheap you know when you start out inexpensive or cheap the idea is that we're trying to get all the business we can we're trying to you know pay the rent we're basically trying to put food on the table uh for the family every night and 
we got to be working. If we're not working, then we're not making money. If that's new and new in the business. So there becomes a point where I feel like you make that transition. You realize, hey, I'm probably not making any money. I'm probably just bringing in enough to pay the bills and maybe scrape by. Checking counts always right at zero and I'm not growing. So then I need to up my prices. We're not going to get into the whole price thing. I think Nick, me, Nick and I was talking that maybe we dive into that a little bit next week. Yeah. But you raise your price. And when you raise your price, then the sticker shock comes. And, and basically a customer, when they have sticker shock, it's like they have an idea of what they thought something might cost. And you come in about five times higher than that. Yeah. <laughs> five times, man. That's, yeah. yeah. You know? and, and, it, and it happens, right? And, mm-hmm. and then it's up to you to explain or, or I guess, you know, show the value okay. of the service that you're providing to put that customer back down and say, okay, hey, listen, you know, yeah, you're expecting to spend 200. Yes, we charge a thousand for this service. Um, here's what we do and why we do it, you know? And, and then if that customer is not, if it's not in their budget at all, that doesn't mean they're not your customer. Okay. Maybe you should find something that's a little bit more budget friendly, a service that they're willing to pay for. So a customer comes in willing to spend 200 bucks, you're at a thousand, you can probably squeeze out 350 to 400 of them anyway. So maybe we transition that to an interior service or, you know, or, or just split the, you know, split it and don't do the full in and out on whatever we're doing. So I think that there's common ground that can be met between you and the customer. You just have to acknowledge that. And a lot of that's determining their budget. Mm -hmm. So they already have that budget in your head. You're playing that guessing game, right? You are absolutely in the envelope. You don't know what they want to spend. Um, Mm -hmm. But we, we got good, better, best, right? So we're going to start usually at the better of the best, right? Like, Hey, this is what I know your car needs. And then as soon as you read their face and you're saying, Hey, look, Man, they got a little bit of that sticker shock. <laughs> oh, we got a good for you. If you don't want to be at that, if you don't want the best, that's okay. We're yeah. still going to keep you as a customer. We've got a good option for you. It's going to look better. But you still, now they have it in their head. They're like, man, that ceramic coating would have been, would have made my car look amazing, right? Mm-hmm. That's or, right. Cool. We'll just do, you know, you want to do a, some sort of spray six months, you know, something quick, something inexpensive. Something that gets some by, get, gets some, get some feet get wet into. in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we got to give them that option. I think that was one of our biggest things that we we brought in this last year. Um, and it's been a really good sort of conversion where they try that and then they go for a four year coding. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what we've done to combat that is we've made pretty much everything a la carte. So mm-hmm. we start with our standard detail. Right. And that's a, mm-hmm. like our standard is what we um, want every vehicle, every boat, every plane that we do with that um, are maybe dealing with um, uh, to that point, right? That's our standard. Mm -hmm. Everything else is sold on top of that. So correction is sold on top of that. Protection is sold on top of that. Um, Everything like, you know, your headlights, your engine base, things like that that are everybody's are add-ons. But all of our protection, all of our corrections add on. All we want to do is get the vehicle clean at first. Then we're going to upsell you. And we let that customer kind of build the price along the way. And I think that that helps reduce some of our sticker shock. Yes, we still have it. But like, I think that that build your price mentality, whereas uh, Nick, you go, you say, hey, here are our three packages. Pick the one that fits for you, mm-hmm. which I love that, too. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that concept works excellent. Um, but ours is like we here's our base and then we sell you everything else on top of that. And we're trying to show let me, value. Let me ask you this real quick on that. Yeah. Like, like I know you said standard, right? What yeah. would be the percentage of people that just say, hey, give me whatever that standard package is? Is that like an? 50 percent without those extra add-ons no it's minimal um okay. people pay on the standards probably 30 percent of the people that, that do business here we okay. i mean uh, but but we have a really good sales team too and and gabby leads that and she does a fantastic job of of making sure that the customers are are getting you know that 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 we're showing enough value in the services that we provide to sell you on something else and and also at check-in when it, when, a, when a vehicle shows up it's another mm-hmm. opportunity to say hey you know, we have you down for the standard one mm-hmm. and, and then maybe we need to upgrade this or may, you may want to think about ceramic cut the windshield, maybe the car seat in the back, something like that. And once you already got them there, you know what I mean? Then that's a- well, the money, the <laughs> money that they came. Yeah. So once they show up, right, the money that they were already intending to spend is spent. Mm-hmm. Right. So if they, just say the standard's yeah. 300 bucks, right, for yeah. them, whatever, that 300 is spent in their mind. 
So, so to add an extra hundred or 200 or 300 on at that point is a lot easier than in that initial phone call where you're trying to get them from 300 to 600 or 600 to a thousand or so forth. So on. it's kind of almost like bartering one on one. I mean, when you think yeah. about it, like if you have, I don't know if y'all did, but like the Craigslist days where you're looking for something and you oh, get yeah. the person to meet oh, up yeah. with you. Absolutely. Once you're met once you're up, there, then you really then start you negotiating negotiate. and yeah. hitting them, you know, with, with, you know, negotiating rather than on the phone. And they're like, yeah. Like, well, yeah, because yeah. there's only some I'm on the phone, you know, like you, you can't read each other. You can't, you know, there's there's the gap, mm-hmm. you know, and you Absolutely. don't know if this person's serious when they're in person. That's when the sale happens, you know. Um, but, you know, you still you still have the sticker shock mentality. You still have the customer that comes in and says, holy shit. You know, um, I was expecting to spend twenty five dollars on an interior detail, not two hundred and twenty five dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a big difference. Right. But also letting them walk away. You know what I mean? Being like, look, that understand that's, that's not it. the customer for you. And you know what? For me, it's also that intrinsic value, right? A, obviously, I know Dustin, uh, you know, your shop has amazing customer service, right? So, so does ours. And then you're going to be like, hey, the time, the effort, the, you know what I mean? They're walking into a shop that the experience that, that gives them that, that yeah. they know, okay, wow, this is a professional place. This is where I want to go. Hey, guess what? You want to go spend a little bit less. You're going to go into some scary situation where you don't really <laughs> might not feel comfortable taking your car, your boat, your plane. Right. That's where we capitalize in the aviation market, yep. especially with our business structure and our business model is, is yes, there's those guys who don't know aircraft. Sure. They're not sure. experienced in that nature, but Hey, I'll pull the pressure up, wash her out and get after it and do it for a couple hundred bucks while they're charging, you know, 600 or right. some odd. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's true. But you're paying for our experience. Absolutely. You're paying for our knowledge. You're paying for our certifications or our federal aviation administration certifications yes. of, Hey, we won't damage your aircraft. You're not going to be paying for corrosion, you know, yeah. uh, maintenance down the and, road, and, yeah. this, these additional costs. Yeah. And, and, and so that's the value, mm-hmm. right? That's, that's the, the that's the baked in value yep. that you say, Hey, this is why. And, mm-hmm. and learning how to do that without saying, this is a typical detailer's response. Okay, I'm going to charge you $1,200 to correct and, and, and coat this car. Oh, my God, I was thinking I could do this for $300. Oh, but we're going to use a root pass posture and a six-and-a-half-inch yellow pad with some gold pad and, 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 and the 3,000 sandpaper. And they're like, that's, that's not value. They don't care. No. They don't care value. Value is... No matter what, when you leave this shop, you're going to be happy and satisfied. We are mm-hmm. building a relationship with you for a lifetime. This is not slap some shit on your car mm-hmm. and pat you on the butt on the way out. Mm-hmm. This is we're building a relationship with you. This is we're going to take care of everything, any issues that may come up. We're going to deal with this professionally. You can look out there in my shop and see everybody's professional. You can see exactly how we're going to communicate to you. You're going to get exactly what you paid for and probably just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Just trust mm-hmm. us. And by the way, you can use Detail Bookie to send that invoice over, <laughs> and it's itemized and it's real pretty, you know. Um, so you know, so um, sticker shock is going to happen. You brought up a good point, Nick. Um, customer is not your customer. Customer comes to spend twenty five dollars. You're two hundred twenty five dollars. There's no way you're going to find middle ground. Yeah. How do you tell them buy, man? How do you tell them? You know, like I let them know if they want to get a car wash, you can get the car wash. Yeah, get get the car cleaned up a little bit. But at the same time, you're like, look, again, this is sort of where we're at, right? If if it's a customer that's really just adamant or just you don't want it to turn into a negative experience, you're Mm -hmm. gonna end it on a positive and be like, look, hey, this is kind of where we're at. This is kind of how we value our work. Um, Mm -hmm. Look, you've got our number. Take our card. Book it online. Here's a here's a discount code for. You know, what I mean, five yep. percent, which isn't going to be that middle ground, right? No, but it's, but go, it's an olive branch. Yeah, go go ahead and check out the other local places and see where you're most comfortable because mm-hmm. that's that's the most important part. You know, what I mean, that's the spiel, that's the that's the talk, that's that's how you're going to you know sort of go around, go about it with the customer. It is. Do you it, ever refer anybody to like oh, say you uh, you know what I mean? Hey, there's someone I know that I trust and I've built a relationship business to business. Yeah. Hey, he's more in your price point or she's more in your price point. Yeah. Uh, I think I do that. You know what I mean? We get those Mm -hmm. guys. Hey, how much are your auto auto details? And when I'm over here saying, hey, we're not going any less than 220. But what? Right. But I got someone I got someone I know I trust and I guarantee you'll do quality work for a better, you know, more in your price budget. Nick, All do you guys refer? Yeah, yeah so, so we do time. too. Yeah, we do too. And um, and, and and so along with prices like schedule. So if our schedule's full, 
um, and someone comes in and says, I need this done right now, we, we refer out to some mm-hmm. of the other local shops that we know can handle it like, you know, more of a pull up service. Um, and then, of course, with pricing. But now, listen, I'm a detailer. I got to pay. I, I, I've got to, you know, I've got to uh, buy groceries. It's Friday. I got to buy groceries today. I need money. I got to tell this customer that's willing to pay twenty five dollars. Um, no, my and, and this took a long time for me to understand. And and it, and matter of fact, my dad was probably the biggest um, help in teaching me this. That not every customer is your customer, not every job is your job. Here's the reality: you take on that twenty five dollar interior detail, and you're going to work six or eight hours on that thing. The customer is probably still not going to be happy with it. Mm-hmm. You have lost money on that job. Then you've taken that job; it's tied you up on time. You might have missed another job that you could have worked on and actually made money at. So, so, you know, satisfying your, uh, you know, just taking that quick fix to the get the, to, to get the dollar, it can cost you. And most of the time will cost you in the long run. So just taking that on the chin and saying, okay, we're so far apart budget to what we charge. And this customer is definitely not my customer. Let them walk, let them go, make them feel good about it. You know, we're not, we're not firing the customer. We're just, <laughs> it's your budget doesn't align. Okay. Yeah. You make them feel good about it. Right. Make them feel like you did your part. You're here to help them refer them over to another shop that you think they can do it for that price or or down to be Bo's car wash, you know, um, where where they get twenty five dollars to get you in and out. And and so and, and and then you move on. OK, then you go, OK, well, I got to work today. So maybe I'm calling an existing, cus- you know, some of my customers and seeing what 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 business I can stir up. But don't go spend six or eight hours on a twenty five dollar interior detail that, you know, you're going to lose money mm-hmm. on. And you're also liable for a bad review. If you Absolutely. know they're unpleasable, then yep. that's that's going to cost you money within itself. Yeah. You know, and uh, when, uh, I know we don't want to get into the pricing game, but I'm going to tell you right now, the ones that are willing to pay for your service are the ones that are going to be satisfied with mm-hmm. your service. Usually if you convince somebody to way overpay out of their budget it, and or, or even bring your price down to match their budget, those yeah. are always the ones that just complain, you know? <laughs> Yeah. The one Ask thing me I how think, I know. <laughs> yeah, the one thing I was thinking about is like when you get that that customer that's that's a first time, right? Yeah. And you're like, okay, this could be a five, 10 year customer, right? And you're you're looking at the car, you're trying to it's kind of having that bigger scope of instead of just that one job. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to take those those positives, those negatives and say, Hey, look, is this gonna be a maintenance weekly? Is this gonna be something where I'm seeing them once a year? Um, when you're just starting out, I think you gotta look at each individual customer as their you know what I mean? Really yeah. dive into it in, in as much detail as you can because you're you're just trying to build your customer base. You know what I mean? And maybe in the beginning, not every customer is going to be a five star customer, right? That's right. But having those other ones that are going to be like, look, it's a pain in the butt, but we're there every week. You know what I mean? He's a, he, you know what I mean? Doesn't tip or doesn't do this or he kind of complains a little bit. But you know what? He, he he's, he's here. Like he's loyal. There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of in the beginning. It's kind of yourself a little bit and understand look, as i grow i still want to be able to service it because as a thank you it's like how can i take care of you know what i mean it's it's it's, it's interesting when you're just starting out mm-hmm. well i think you brought up a really good point nick and i don't even think you realized it so um okay so the sticker shot comes from that initial detail so whether it's be ceramic coating or whatnot or right, whatever it is every detail outside after that doesn't have to be that detail. Mm -hmm. Like it it can go down to the maintenance and we offer like a 50% off monthly maintenance. If you do our maintenance every 30, within 30 days, it's half off. So we're talking, we're back down to that 40, $50 detail now. Okay. We've now brought it to your budget, but what we want to do is get it up to our standard, get it up to where we can maintain this at a reasonable rate. So we're not spending eight hours to detail it for 50 bucks. We're spending 45 minutes to detail it for 50 bucks, you know, or whatever. And, and so like, getting them past that not don't be so fixated on that number one job but helping them understand that yes you're going to pay on the front end yes the cost is going to be higher than you probably uh, uh realized or thought it would be but think about this long term when we get six months to a year down and you're paying 40 50 or 60 or 80 bucks for a, a an in and out now now the price is caught back up to what you're you know what you were willing to spend on a yearly basis anyway and the one thing for me is like what you kind of, how do you know, right? How do you know where you're like, okay, now I'm setting the market versus, uh, you know, right? And yeah. For me, it was when I, when you start seeing all the, hey, I had this guy do it, I got to fix it. And yep. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Once you, so for, for if you're there by one man show, right? As soon as you're starting to get calls, I'm like, hey, I took it to this guy down the street. It just wasn't great. You know what I mean? Or they didn't yeah. do a great job. 
once you start getting all those calls, then you know, okay, the reputation is somewhere out there. You might not even know from where. It might be a person, it might be online, it might be your website, it might be something you convey. Um, they're looking for you because they see you as an elevated service. And sort of working towards that, and I think is really important to, to sort of try and see where you're at and in your own market. You, you know, when you know, you know, when you've kind of made it to that point, when in your little local Facebook groups, like Voices of Sarah Lands, our little city group, you know, mm -hmm. there's like a bunch of them around here. And inevitably, someone goes in there and says, I'm looking for someone to detail my car, doesn't want to pay an arm and a leg, like, you know, <laughs> under $100, and you're not tagged 100 times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's when you know, okay, they get it now. All right. Yeah. So, you know, like, please, I'm like cringing anytime somebody says, you know, that's, that's not ridiculously high. And then people tag me, and I'm like, man don't tag me on that because i already know what this customer is about you know like yeah. they already yeah i need a perfect job i just don't want to pay for it um, i think that's a really cool marketing thing too just so you know like if, any, if there's anyone right just starting out you've got small shop and you're, you're like hey we're kind of slow what can we do in some free time you join those yeah, groups join right? the groups and you're yeah. gonna get a couple posts a week of like random people just hey anyone know where the detail services and you just absolutely your own place mm -hmm. yeah. you know what i mean and i and i see a lot of small places in my area do that i follow all the groups i don't really post too much but it's like you can sort of see where where it's coming from. No, yeah. absolutely. And and so we used to chase the groups all the time. And 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 like a lot of those are looking for the bargain shop. You know, they're the bargain shoppers. And and so you you do grow out of that. And and but I mean I say grow out of that. You do determine that like in our area at least, like those typically those one the people in those groups are looking for that cheap detail and so now that we've 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 noticed that you know after years of of being in those groups and and using that to heavily market towards that that's really not our ideal customer um let's talk about planes let's talk about planes real quick so when we talk about you know giving a price do we give it is it to the owner is it to the pilot how does that work like, it, who's getting sticker shock here it's a case by case <laughs> okay and um sometimes it's direct owner like okay. just last week uh direct owner Mm -hmm. and um actually this week and uh so fully happy i mean yeah. actually i almost kind of kicked myself because i thought i was uh, coming in high he, he agreed and he had quickly. a specific yeah. brand <laughs> aircraft that uh it's like they got money let if they've know. got one of yeah, these they let you know he and was, especially he was, for what you're getting it's not a jet but still it's a three quarter million dollar plane sure sure they're like right. okay they're not gonna balk at our price for yeah. ceramic coating and whatnot so um, you know, and I, I even threw it kind of high and he said, like, Oh yeah, let's do it. And sure. Like, it was way too fast. It was <laughs> but, way too fast. <laughs> you know, you also get the, the pilots, you know, the, the, the I call them PICs pilots in charge of, of the aircraft, they manage okay. the manage aircraft. And, um, you could tell they're on a budget or they have incentivization or some ah, kind of incentives to, to keep it as low as possible. Cause maybe at the end of the year, they get a kickback from the the owner that if you didn't jet, spend you know this I mean? budget, exactly. yeah, you get a Boom. percentage of what you and save. You kind of, you almost think like, you, know, you never save. You're like, it's not even your money, bro. Come right. on, like, why Come are you nickel on, and man. diming me, yeah. man? <laughs> yeah, exactly. but but you know, for the most part, you still get that sticker shock. But yeah. where we're starting to see that difference, and I think there's some some correlation with what you're saying in, in the automotive perspective, is we're starting to get that reputation of these aren't just standard details. Sure. Yep. And people are willing to pay for the AMP, the yep. AMPIA, the pilot, the aviator experience of knowing my asset, because a lot of them are genuine assets. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's going to be in good hands yep. and it, I'm not going to get any mess ups. My systems are going to be perfectly fine. And, and you know, they're thinking about it from a professional expert opinion. And willing to pay for it. Absolutely. You know, willing to pay for it. Uh, that, that story brought up a, a funny story of mine. It's not even mine story, but uh, a good buddy of mine, Joel LaPalm, he's probably watching. He usually watches. And I'm probably going to butcher this story, but I'll try it anyway. So uh, a couple of years ago, probably four or five years ago, um, they were – had an opportunity to do a very large uh, sport fishing boat down in Miami, maybe or Orlando or somewhere. And so he, uh, so they were going to do this uh, promo event and they're going to ceramic coat this boat. And so he was working up the price. They spent like a week coming up with the price for this thing. And he says he calls the guy up and he gives a price immediately, like before he could even get the final word out of the total amount and he's like yeah go ahead and he's like son of a <laughs> like, i got no i should have charged more so like you know we all still have those i mean you think about joel palm big business owner like you know knows his stuff inside and out and and to have that moment so you know us detailers we we all experience that mm -hmm. and you know we 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 think we cover in on the high side but then there's some people that say hey i'm I, you know they're willing to pay whatever you know for for quality and and confidence and know you're going to go in and do a great job so 
Absolutely. They're, they're not as, they're not as, they're, they're few and far between. You know, you, you deal with most of the people that are price conscious that you really have to show the value that you really have to build that, that rapport with them and them understand why it is they may be paying more with you than they are from the next guy. But once mm-hmm. you understand and establish yourself in that market and that's how, you know, that's how you're viewed, then it does become an easier sell and you experience a little less sticker shock. Mm-hmm. Well, do you feel like, again, with the sticker shock, it's like, because again, that's, it sounds like you guys are going big game hunting sometimes, right? Yeah. I'm over here. I'm like, I don't do a lot of big game hunting. You're I'll casting honest, the net. You know what yeah. I mean? We've got, we do that, that I play that, you know, law of averages. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'll have 10, 20, 30 ceramic coatings, right? And I'm like, okay, some are going to be harder than others. Some are going to be easier than others. But that sure. ba- that price baseline is built in just because I know where that number's at. Yeah. Um, versus like, again i'll do custom quotes but it's like those are like big game hunting quotes yes. and you're like damn yeah. it i should have charged more that <laughs> you know what i mean i feel like that, i don't get that feeling i don't get that fun feeling right uh oh well it's never fun because <laughs> because immediately you're like oh did i miss something you yeah. know like like oh shit what did i miss and and you know those big jobs i know we're not talking about big jobs but i think me and you may have had this discussion uh at one of our things is like um you know big jobs can be can be really good or they can be really really bad uh, mm-hmm. and for someone that's not you know prepared and and understand how to get a big job done like that it can quickly turn into a negative or a loss situation pictures and videos yeah. like crazy Absolutely. especially whenever uh, you know we've got a call just recently to go to california to do mm-hmm. a, a very popular jet yeah like i don't want to let all that out yet but sure um that case we know what we're working with we know the owners and the, the yeah you know the you it. know the but the plane there's been it. another you know substantial size aircraft that you're kind of going <laughs> into the dark you're talking to them on the phone and the yeah. other customers hey it's in great shape and this and that oh, yeah. and then you get up to it and you're like crap like yeah. what did we get ourselves into we underbid this yep. you know and, and and that's the biggest thing is just having that all the ins and outs send me videos as send much me information pictures. as you can absolutely and, yeah. and you know let them know why you're kind of asking that's for it. all that because sometimes it comes off like an inconvenience to them but hey i want to make sure i'm meeting your expectations so if you could give me as much information about your aircraft the genuine condition and yeah. we're both happy you know and what I mean? think about the customer that doesn't want to help you give them an accurate price mm-hmm. what is their real agenda if they don't want to help you give them an accurate price, their agenda is to get something quick, get you committed, so you, you know, so they get the the best deal what around. Uh, yeah, right, and hold your feet to the fire on stuff like that. So, like the ones that are willing and understand, like I need certain information from this, or I need to be able to, you know. To, to take a look and us uh, so for boats it's test spots um we'll give you a you know a price an estimate uh and then what we do is we bring them back to the shop and we run a test spot on them and then we give you okay so here's what it's going to be um the ones that aren't willing to do that then then you don't want to do business with anyway those are the ones that tell you, you just need a good coat of wax or something and you know it never just needs a good coat of wax okay? yeah <laughs> like <laughs> ever we were at sun and fun at the booth uh, uh-huh. over there in lakeland florida second biggest yeah. air show in, in the country and uh, we had a guy from a state, I'm not going to say which state, Sure. Uh, for one of our locations out there that, that's now open and uh, talking to him at the booth, man, aircraft's in great shape. It's got 20 year old paint or 30 year old paint. Looks phenomenal though. It's great. And uh, we finally got things orchestrated out to where we can get over there and get them taken care of with sure. our location that's out there. And uh, he sends me pictures and I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're gonna need a new paint job. Like, oh. like there's spots where if we hit that with the polisher, yeah. that it's just gonna poof, it's gonna yeah. turn into dust, and you're gonna see nothing but bare aluminum underneath. You know, like you know, <laughs> it's, it, no, but I mean, it's in good shape for being 30 years old. Well, yeah. maybe that's the case, but yeah. you didn't portray it like that. You know, so and sometimes the sticker shop, that, you know, that job shop, shock, job mm-hmm. shock. Like, oh shit, <laughs> we messed up. Go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, and sometimes the customers honestly don't know. They think it's in great yeah. shape. Yeah, absolutely. You know yeah. I mean? And that's sometimes a road you got to walk them back on and be like, yeah. look. It looks great, but the actual condition of your paint, you actually have no clear coat left. You know what I mean? Like you got to go through some different conversations with them um, to sort of walk them back on it and without offending them because they could be there and they're like, man, my classic car is in perfect shape. Just polish it, ceramic coat. I'm like, I can't. You it's like the ugly stuff. kid syndrome, you know, like if you got a child that if you're, you know, you think that's the most beautiful daughter in the world, but in all actuality, everybody's like, goodness, that's a sea donkey of a child. Like, you know what I mean? But but that's kind of how they view their prized possessions and their, their, their planes that were passed to them from their yeah. father. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. like, it's, she's beautiful. Look yeah. at her. And it's she's like, oh, no, like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to. 
<laughs> go down that road. But anyways. Uh, I had a conversation with a guy uh, earlier. We're gonna wrap it up here. Um, and 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 so um, a buddy of mine, Houston Shine, is uh, he? I saw he made a post on Facebook asking about sales team. And then he sent me a message and he asked me, um, Dustin, do you have a sales team that works with you or work that you've hired? And, and I said, yeah. And he said, well, how does that work? You know, and, and so I think it plays into this, this conversation, right? Hiring a sales guy, hiring someone, a sales team or a salesperson. Um, how does that work um, when you're selling your service? And, and, and how do you go from me selling everything to passing that off to someone else? Nick, do you, do you actively make your, like, are you actively selling your services or is yours? No, how, does, yeah. how does that work? We got an awesome team, you know, sort of at the front there where their yeah. phones are dealing with customers face to face, but it's also giving that sales team the resources they need to be successful, right? Absolutely. You could have the best salesman, in, you know, in the world, but if you don't give them, you know, from the marketing to, you know, something the customer can take to the menu that's easy yes. to, to all these different things that convey your message that that's my message, right? Easily yep. to the customer through that sales team. You're not going to get the conversions you want. No, not at all. You've got to give them the tools. And my, my biggest suggestion is keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Like everybody wants to overcomplicate it because they're trying to justify a price that they're not confident in charging. They mm -hmm. want to overcomplicate what it is they're doing. Dude, at the end of the day, we're making cars shiny and taking all the French fries out from under the seats. Like, that's it. Okay, that is it. In a shiny, protect, get the French fries out. That's our yep. job. Yep. So we're not here to tell them the type of vacuum that we're using or the type of polishing pads and blah, blah, blah. That doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The customer yeah. just wants to know how shiny is it, how shiny is it going to be, and is there going to be any French fries left? Okay. <laughs> one or two. You know what I mean? You yeah. got to gotta... That's our maintenance one. <laughs> we leave two French fries behind every maintenance. Just to, just to make sure you check. <laughs> just to make sure. No, but so so a sales team is is all about simplifying this process, simplifying what it is you do, you know, understanding the customer's pain points, um, identifying what's causing the customer to be questioning about a detail anyway. Like, what is it that, that's bringing them to you? And then selling them on that pain point. So understand, is it um, tree sap? Is it uh, staying in the seat? Is it kids in the back? You know, what is the pain that brought them to you? And then what do we sell to that? So, um, and then again, uh, understanding value and, and what, what it is that your business brings to the table. And that may help reduce sticker shock. So bringing it all full circle, sticker shock's going to happen as you raise your prices. Probably not happening much if you're a new guy in the business. You're probably one of the cheaper cheaper ones around, rightfully so. We all start that way, or most of us do anyway. Um, but as you evolve and as your business grows, you're going to experience sticker shock. And I think the common message is to learn how to show value, not over explain, but under, you know, teach that customer why you charge what you charge and again i think it's make it letting that customer make the decision right yeah. we because of the foot traffic that we have i've our sales model is really to not over push it's kind of like hey this is yeah. what it is if you want it you want it you know what i mean right. it's really hands off <laughs> Yep. Um, because yeah, they're already the coming through, group. right? If they're already walking through, they're already spending money. They already trust us. That's right? Right. We just want to make sure that information is easily conveyed to them so that they can go make a decision if it's something that's important to them. Yeah. And if I can't create that value for them, that's okay too. You know what I mean? That might not be the right customer for that type of detail. And a lot of it comes from confidence from the person delivering the price. So if you're, if you don't have a sales team, you're the one giving the price is a confidence thing, you know, like how confident in you are you of that price? Like, are you, do you understand why you're charging that much? Do you understand the value that you bring? And when you go at that confidently and say, this is what I did, this is why, then, then that customer gains confidence from you. And then you can see the conversion percentage grow. So. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add, Josh? No. No, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, just do not, uh, do not, uh, not get enough pictures <laughs> on of the planes or the boats, and uh, uh, and make sure you get enough information. It looks like we got a comment coming in from my buddy Joel Lapom. The quote was for. Oh, here we go. I knew I'd get it from him. The quote was thirty five thousand. He was quick to say yes. I asked him why he was so fast to say yes. He said that my thirty five thousand dollar quote is not even a quarter. Is that 35,000? Yeah, it's not even a quarter tank of gas. So understand who and what you are also doing and same, do some homework. Makes sense, right? Yeah. A quarter of a tank of fuel for this. And and, and here we are, you know, detailing the, our ceramic coating, the whole boat. And that's a quarter of a tank of fuel. That yeah. is a quarter of a tank of fuel. Well, now he's going to want you to do it again for that price every six months. Yeah, you know right. I mean? Yeah, no doubt. <laughs>
no doubt. No, that story is always funny. I mean, it's funny because, you know, we can always laugh at our own pain. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know, we all do that. We all miss on jobs. So, uh, guys, go at it with confidence. Um, you know, make sure you understand the job, but make sure you understand the value that you bring to your market. And One thing that um, came to mind, yeah, yeah. Uh, just technical enough to keep their attention while you're giving your spiel. Absolutely. And enough Absolutely. to slightly educate. Yeah. Just to yeah. where they understand the art behind what you're doing, the yep. technicality that, you know what I mean? At least oh, from the I, aviation perspective. And and that seems to always, because at first when we were at Sun and Fun, our pitch changed from the first day yeah, to the sure half does. point to the end. And we like fine tuned it to get reactions. And yep. it, it seemed like just enough technicality. And every customer is a little different too. Mm -hmm. And so you can't just, you know, stand up here and say, this is how you treat every customer that walks in. Some guys that, that that's his baby, you know what I mean? He may want to know what it is you're using or, or what is your process. But, but chances are the mom of the minivan don't care. You yeah, know what I mean? She sure. just wants it clean. She yeah. get the French yeah. fries out front. Get those French fries, man. Get the French fries, man. Come on. Here, here's All an right. idea. Here's an idea. All right, what you got? Get you a little coupon yeah. and say, hey, we saw that you're inspecting our work. Here's a 5% discount. Stick uh, in there to see. <laughs> glad glad you're checking the work. I there you go. That. <laughs> it, it look, and it looks like a French fry, right? There you go. Yeah. We, caught, you, go. we caught you looking. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> that is great. That is great. To, uh, you need to trademark that. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Nick, you got anything else for us, brother? No, we're ready to rock for the week. Um, if, just want to give a shout out to Detail Bookie. You know what I mean? Last two months, right? It's not snowing. It's not raining. Uh, we finally hit a little bit of spring, summer. So big shout out to Detail Bookie. Couldn't have done the last couple months without it. So it's, appreciate you know, that, makes my life so much easier, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. It's back. Uh, it's good back to get on air with you, man. I enjoyed the conversation. We had to take a couple weeks off. SDC was there, and then you're always traveling. You're on a plane, a boat, a I don't even yeah. know what country. Plane, you're in train. I've got a tough know. life. You know, it's yeah, just hard. Yeah, it's hard being yeah. Dustin Jackson. It, 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 surprisingly <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right, man. Great show as always. Thank you, brother. We'll see y'all yeah, next week. Care. Yep.